Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Uh, I'm not going to take too much of your time, but I do want to talk to you about something that's really on my mind. You know, we've been having a whole lot of conversations about what's going on with Kanye Kyrie, with how the system is set up, with all of the bootlegs who are sitting up attacking him, and the fact that uh, the, one of the most unlikely people came to his defense in Candace Owens. We've been talking about a lot of stuff, uh, and I'm going to continue to do that. Also, I am going to start to uh, phase out the inspirational content on this site and it's it's already on another site and I'm going to start moving it slowly uh, moving that stuff over there the one thing that I will keep are the theme days you know money Mondays and all that I'm going to keep that here but all the other stuff uh, I am going to move to uh, or continue to just let be there and we're going to go back to really being focused on black issues here primarily uh, not that I don't think that we need that uh, we need that just like anybody else we need to be on our game we need to be as an individual at the top of our game uh, but I want to make sure that the people who are coming here to get a specific thing get it so I'm going to connect all of you guys to my uh, Visionetics Institute, uh, which is uh, the name of the channel is the Dream Matrix, but it's the for the it's from the Visionetics Institute. I'm gonna connect you guys to that, uh, and I will consistently share the link so you can go over there if that's what you want. Uh, you can get that too. Um, as always, remember we need your support. What we do comes at a cost, and it is not cheap. The work that needs to be done and the work we desire to do. Uh, comes at a price and we will continue to push forward but we definitely need your support with that being said i'm going to ask you to look in the description box and either click the link and give or give through the organization's cash app account which that information is there as well let's talk about why it's so important to uh, be involved and engaged and to support the work of organizations like the odyssey project and the work that i do um, on an ongoing basis have done for over 30 years. Look, we talk about constantly complaining about the failures of black men. We constantly complain about how emotionally unstable black men and we point to the high rate of intimate partner violence, intimate partner homicide. We point to uh, the tendency of young black males to implode point to a rise in uh, suicide among black males between the ages of 14 and 24. All the statistics are that's to support that there's a problem. I've been telling you there's a problem long before it started to show up on social media. Before social media, I was telling you there was a problem. I was telling you that it was going to be exacerbated. I told you in my books, I told you in my writing, I told you in my lectures. And and when social media opened up, I shouted it from the rooftops. Uh, and even those who heard it and said, man, I get it, I love it, I like it, didn't understand the importance of being engaged in creating a, an, an avenue and a pathway to address the issue. See, what happens is when you don't properly develop, you don't properly socialize, you don't properly have the, 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 the path to manhood laid out for, you, for young males, regardless of race, then they seek the path as driven by their biological evolution so as more testosterone uh, is created in their bodies they become more aggressive they look for ways to express that aggression they become uh, more emotionally agitated because that comes from the lack of being able to naturally express any form of true power and put in, in, in a uh, state of being and belonging they don't have a place they don't know what they belong to they don't know who they are that identity crisis is working against them see that's what racial socialization does that's what proper socialization and racial socialization does and we don't have it set up in a universal uh 
dynamic to where our young boys are guaranteed to get it. You, you go into other communities, whether it's the Jewish community, whether it's the Latino community, whether it's the Arab community or Asian community, there are rites of passage. There's some form of development that's universal to that enclave that everybody understands this is what males do in this, in, in, in this group, in this, this, this enclave, in this race in this house, in this family, this is what males do. And on a universal level, it's an understanding. That's another problem we have in, with black manhood is we don't have it universally defined. We don't have it defined in a way that I can leave my home in Houston and go to visit friends in New York, Chicago, Detroit, um, Los Angeles, Atlanta, Philadelphia, and, and on down the line. And expect to see the same behavior different culture based on geographical influences but the same dynamic of manhood a man who's a protector a provider of a, a, a promoter a priest and a prophet in his home someone who understands their role in, in in their responsibility someone who believes in themselves someone who stands firmly someone who doesn't need to look out of themselves to be defined or to be validated someone who knows how important they are to their community, to their home, to their family, to their children, to their spouses. Uh, we need that so desperately and we aren't getting it because we have 1.5 million men missing, not by accident. And we, if, if we're gonna be honest with ourselves, black men, we have to own some of this. Yes, there, there's no bigger target than the target on the back of a black man. The black man, when rendered powerlessness, when, when, when rendered powerless neutralizes the fluidity and force of black women who may be given a path so in other words the reason why you can see a lot of black men black women who are becoming extremely successful is because they understand historically that no matter how uh wealthy she becomes no matter how what there's a certain level of power and and, and mobility she cannot create without the presence of male force and I've always said it this way that we will only get as high as our women can spiritually lift us and we will only get as far as our men can physically lead us and it's more complex than that but at the end of the day the bottom line is this is what we are going to have to push for we're going to have to stand up we're going to have to sit up and say look no I'm not one for giving passes. Yes, there's culpability on all sides. Yes, there's failures on all sides. But right now, I am so concerned about the current state of black men. The, the fact that we have jumped 49% in suicide rates for black males between the age of 14 and 24. That is an astronomical jump in a six, six year period. Okay, not to mention uh, the violence. You know, violence is a part of the poverty dynamic, number one. So uh, the fact that there's viral violence in the hood isn't like some phenomenon. It's a natural uh, result of a lack of resources. But we have to be able to understand that a great deal of that can be mitigated by simply understanding that we need to socialize them into an identity where they know themselves and they have a clear understanding of what respect means because the number one influence of violence among black males is the feeling of being disrespected. The second most prevalent influence is the lack of proper racial socialization. The third is having been a victim of violence. The fourth is having witnessed violence. And the fifth is urban hassle. And for those of you who don't know what urban hassle is, urban hassle is all the things that our kids are dealing with in the hood. Sirens and gunfire late at night. Uh, for people in the, on the East Coast and the Midwest, L trains all time of the day. Uh, having to navigate gang violence to get to and from school, having to navigate drug use and drug activity to get to for school. All the things that come with a part of being a hood is, is, is urban hassle. And that makes a person emotionally edgy. 
Uh, you add in the fact that there's no proper socialization and clear understanding of what's happening when they're going through the changes f from puberty to adolescence, and they are starting to produce testosterone in high levels, and they are acting out what their body feels without having a clear understanding uh, emotionally, psychologically, and historically of what they're supposed to be doing with those changes. When I, What we teach our boys at Black Men Lead is that when you go through that change, your voice deepens. You start to see a physical difference between you and your female counterpart. Although you're the same age, you're bigger, you're stronger, you're faster. Uh, with that testosterone and deep voice comes a, an edginess, a, 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 a sense of aggression. That size, that strength, that aggression is, cre is, is in you now so that you can physically protect those who can't protect themselves. So whereas it, for a long time, your female counterpart and you were the same size, she may have been stronger and faster. She may have been able to beat you up, but what happens as you, get, you, you move into this? Now you're moving into the demands of manhood. One of the physical demands is to protect. Now, beyond the protection is also the covering. So the covering includes protection, but it includes protection outside of the physical realm. So you're supposed to cover them emotionally, spiritually. You're supposed to cover them in a space that gives them the confidence and the security to spread and expand themselves and do things as uh, they are designed to do and, and walk in the power of their feminine energy. We have such a major role that we don't understand. And then we also have simultaneously the teachings that we don't need each other, that we can execute who we are without the other, but that's not the design. And anytime you take anything outside of its design, you diminish its capacity, period. You can use a shoe for a hammer, but it's not gonna be as good of a hammer as a hammer, and it's not gonna be as good of a shoe as a shoe if you keep using it, you're gonna, you're gonna damage it. So in essence, we have to learn how to operate in that. So look, I'm gonna get ready to get off of here, but again, we need your support. We need to be more evaluated. We need to stop making excuses. We need to start actually walking and doing and being engaged. We can't complain about stuff that we are not invested in changing, period. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.